Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about the reading section of the IELTS um, test. Okay, so I first just want to do a quick overview about what you can expect for the reading section and I'm going to go over various question types that commonly come up in the IELTS reading section. So the reading section consists of 40 questions and you'll be given 60 minutes. And something I want to note too is you're not just going to be given one text and asked 40 questions about it. That's not how it works. You'll be given um, minimum three different texts and there will be about, you know, maybe maybe 10 ish questions for each one, approximately 10 to 15, something like that. Also, it won't be the same type of question throughout the entire thing. There might be, you know, one, um, you know, one text you're required to read, and then it might give you a few multiple choice, a few true and false, a few where you have to label a diagram, something like that, right? So it's going to give you some different ones, okay? Um, also, it's important to be able to identify specific information and also to identify the writer's views and claims as well, right? So some of the questions are going to just directly ask you what you're reading specifically. Other ones are going to want you to kind of infer and imply and say what you think the writer's view or claim is. You know, what do you think was the purpose of them writing the article they wrote or, you know, whatever it is that they wrote. So we're going to go over two of these. We're going to go over one today and we're going to go over one next day as well. And if there are many requests for more different ones, I'm happy to do more. But for now, we're just going to go through two and we're going to go through multiple different types of questions for each of these, um, uh, each of these texts that we're going to read. So the text that we're going to read today is actually an article from CBC. It's this article right here that you can find uh, online on your computer. Uh, so we're first going to just read the article. Um, so here the headline of the article says, After my sons were caught in Toronto transit violence, I realized I can't always protect them. So right, right off the bat, it seems like this is an article about a serious issue. As a mom, I've done my best to help them be independent, but this shook us up. And looks like the article was written July 19th, 2023, uh, four in the morning, Eastern Standard Time, uh, July, yeah, July 19th, we, that we already said. Okay. Uh, it was a typical Monday morning, almost. My kids were sitting at the breakfast counter while I was getting ready for summer school or while getting ready for summer school. However, there was an unusual silence in the air. Without hesitation, I began addressing the elephant in the room. The conversation had revolved around how to stay safe uh, in case they ever found themselves in a dangerous situation. It wasn't the first time we had discussed safety, but this time was different. Just a few days prior, my boys experienced first the first-hand chaos and fear that erupted after a passenger was stabbed on the Toronto subway. The incident took place dangerously close to our home inside Eglinton Station uh, in the heart of Midtown Toronto. That proximity made the situation even more unsettling for us. My children were on a train uh, that was headed toward Eglinton. Thankfully, their train did not stop there. And for that, the driver held the top spot in the July 6th entry in my gratitude journal. I will be late, Ma. The train did not stop at Eglinton Station because of some security incident, said my 13-year-old son when he calls me. I could sense fear and confusion in his voice as he spoke. I started noticing the sound of sirens in the distance, and that moment, I wasn't sure if they were police cars or if they were where they were going. The minute it dawned on me that they were all heading towards Eglinton Station, my heart began to race with worry and fear. We later learned that my elder son, with a calmness beyond his years, had gotten off at the station, holding his 10-year-old brother's hand tightly so as not to lose him in the crowd. Soon, he called me back. The buses were crowded, and he said he was scared to get on. I found it unusual given his comfort with public transit. Then, two Uber drivers I had booked refused to give them a ride. 
At that moment, my partner stepped in, taking on the longest eight minutes of our lives as he drove to pick them up. Once they were safely in the car, I learned that my older son started crying. He repeatedly ex expressed his worry, asking, what if I had lost my brother in the crowd? While an arrest was made, the emotional impact lingered within our family for days and for many sleepless nights. The haunting questions, what if they'd been on the other train? What if the stabbing had happened on theirs? Were played in my mind. The day after, my children made the decision to stay home and avoid going to summer camp, but we needed to move forward. My children rely on public transit and use it every day. I'm proud of their independence and their love for trains. At breakfast on Monday morning, while they ate their freshly made dosas, a savory crepe that is a staple breakfast among South Indians, we went, again went over safety guidelines. I emphasized remaining alert and aware of their surroundings, maintaining a safe distance from the platform's edge, learning the emergency exits, and not hesitating to seek assistance from staff or security. In the event of a dangerous situation, I asked them to stick together, call me immediately, and note the location uh, to let me know where they are. With a very heavy heart, I added that in the event of gunshots, they must immediately take cover. Unlike their talkative selves, my sons listened without interruption. After an uncomfortable silence, my younger son spoke up. Mom, I understand how to avoid fights with people. But how can I protect myself from random acts of violence where people are getting targeted for no reason? I found myself speechless. How can I explain why there was a shooting, apparently unprovoked, near his father's office in downtown Toronto the following day? Or another shooting incident near Blur and Young in the early morning of the same day? We moved to Canada a couple of years ago and chose a home near Eglinton Station. Uh, we'd heard it had a low crime rate and convenient public transportation, but above all, we love the hustle and bustle of the community. Witnessing such events unfold in our own backyard served as a stark reminder that safety can never be taken for granted. As a mother, I have always taken pride in finding the balance between being a helicopter parent and a hands-off one, but this has disrupted that delicate equilibrium. The realization that I wouldn't always be there to protect them threw me on an emotional roller coaster. I wished I could shrink them back to the safety of my womb, shielding them from violence and bloodshed. In the aftermath of this experience, I've learned to appreciate the simple act of sharing breakfast together even more. Mistake not, I still carry a heavy heart, but I'm going to cherish the moments I have with my family and celebrate my sons and their growing independence. But before I get into any questions, uh, you know, we're going to go through about this article, I want to first kind of summarize what were the main points in the article. Well, basically, it was a mother who had, it was about a mother who had two sons, and the sons were on a subway train uh, during the time um, of where I in a different subway train, there was a stabbing, someone stabbed someone else. So there were police cars coming. Uh, there were a lot of sirens, you know, a lot of emergency vehicles coming uh, because of this incident. And the mother was very worried about her sons. She wasn't there with her sons. The boys stuck together and they called their mother and, uh, you know, talked to her and expressed that they were afraid to get on the bus. And this surprised her because, you know, normally they're, they're pretty comfortable with public transit. So she figured there must be something really really not not good going on also we all we also know that two uber drivers refused to pick the boys up from that place that the mother had ordered right so two separate uber drivers weren't willing to do it likely because they recognized it was a dangerous situation and they weren't willing to put themselves at risk and so then the dad uh, he he went to the you know to where they were and he picked them up himself in the end and they were fine, thank goodness, but it was a scary situation. And then, you know, they had lots of sleepless nights. It was it was a challenging situation to recognize that there's a lot of violent crimes that uh, that hap that were happening in their area. And what if their sons? That thankfully they weren't on the the subway train with the stabbing. But what if they'd been on that train? Or what if they were the ones getting stabbed? You know, it's a really scary 
scenario. It's, 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 it's a scary scenario and it worries them, this, this mother, rightfully so. So that's what the article was about, right? It's about a mother who is concerned about the violent crimes happening in Toronto, whose sons were caught up in the mix of, you know, well, not caught up in the mix of, but her sons were um, near the crime scene of one of these incidents. And, you know, so it was, it was scary. Okay. So let's move on to multiple choice. The first one's pretty straightforward. It just asks, where did the story take place, right? So this one's pretty simple. It took place in Toronto, Ontario. So B is the answer, right? In fact, even in the headline, Toronto was mentioned. And so this one is, you know, a fairly easy one and hopefully is fairly obvious that that's where it happened. Uh, what did the mother talk to her children about? Did she talk to them about kindness and honor in the community? working hard at school, the importance of voting, or what to do in dangerous situations. So she told, talked to them about what to do in dangerous situations because they had just been in a dangerous situation. Uh, what incident sparked this conversation, right? So why, what, you know, what sparked them to have a conversation about, um, uh, about what to do in a dangerous situation? A, a man was found dead in the river, no, I mean, I'm sure that that would spark that conversation, but no, that's not what happened here. B, someone was stabbed on a crowded subway. So yes, B would be the answer because that's what, what happened. Uh, C, a kidnapper was on the loose. No. And D, there was a school shooting in the area. Also no. Now, I do want to point out that it is possible that a man was found dead in a river at some point or that a kidnapper at some point was on the loose or they also did briefly mention different shootings in this article. However, what was the main event that sparked the conversation? It was the person being stabbed on the subway station, in, you know, on, on a subway train, right? That was the main thing that sparked this. Okay, next is true, false, or not given. Okay, so we're gonna write if the statement uh, is true based on the article false based on the article or not given, which means there wasn't enough information about this. So number one says the sons are 10 years old and 13 years old. So that is true, right? They did reveal the age of the sons and it, they were 10 and 13. So yes, that is true. Number two says crime is always targeted for a good reason. So people can avoid being targeted by not bothering anyone. So this is false, not just, you know, we might think about this and say, no, I don't think that's true. I think that's false. But it was also um, specifically mentioned in the article, right, with one of the sons asking, well, what do we do if, if someone targets us? People, people target other people without having a good reason, right? So it was specifically addressed in the article that just because someone gets attacked, it wasn't necessarily because they did something first, right? It could be for no particular reason. It could be from some stranger that we've never met in our life before ever, who we've done nothing wrong to, who decides to come attack us, right? And so this is false. Crime is, no, crime is not always targeted for a good reason. Uh, number three, it is important to be aware of fire drills. So I think a lot of people would read this and be tempted to say that's true because yeah, it is true right? Uh, it, it's important to be aware of fire drills. However, uh, we're, we would actually write not given because there wasn't actually any information given about this. They didn't mention fire trucks or fire drills or anything like that in this article. This article was not about fire drills. So while it's technically true that it is important, that information was not given, right? I would, I would assume that probably the parents do think that that's important, but that is not what the article was about. So there was no, since there was no information given on this, we would actually write not given for number three, right? So here it is with the answers. We have true, false, and not given. Okay, the next one is you must fill in the blanks. Here it tells us to write only one word for each answer. Sometimes when we're asked to fill in the blanks, we, it might say write exactly two words or write no more than two or no more than three or something like that. And so it's important to read it carefully and make sure that we don't go over the word limit. If it says to only write one word and we write two, that's a penalty, right? It said to only write one word and we didn't listen. So for this case, it's important to write only one word. 
Now that said, since there's no word bank here, we can write any word we want that makes good sense with the article, right? Synonyms do exist. So sometimes there could be multiple answers that make sense. Sometimes there, some of those answers are stronger than others and would get more points than others, but a less strong word would still get some points, right? A word probably wouldn't get many points at all if it made absolutely no sense in the context, right? So we need to make sure that our word makes sense in the context and also that the word is the correct figure of speech that's going to make sense, right? Is the word written in the right formatting? That matters too, right? Okay. So number one, the mother would like her sons to blank her if there is an emergency. I think the answer here is call, right? The mother would like her sons to call her or to phone her if there is an emergency. So either call or phone would be acceptable answers, right? Even though phone is usually a noun, phone can also be a verb, right? To phone someone means to call someone. So that's also uh, a fair answer as well. Okay, it is important to immediately take cover if blank are fired, right? So this one would be guns or gunshots. And our clue there is not only was this uh, very similar to a specific sentence in the article, um, but are fired. Well, what else would be fired? Well, a person could be fired from a job, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about something being fired, right? And what would be fired? Well, a gunshot or a gun would be fired or a bullet, right? If we said, if we could also say if bullets are fired. So guns, gunshots, bullets are good answers here. Uh, number three, after the incident, the family members had a lot of blank nights. Um, so there's a few different words we could put here. The first one that comes to my mind is sleepless nights, right? They mentioned that they weren't sleeping very well. Those next few nights after the incident happened, it affected their family for days afterwards, even after the sons were both safe, right? Of course, the scariest time was during, right? But after was also very scary as well, right? Um, so sleepless nights, we could even, we could all say difficult nights, that could work as well. But I think sleepless nights makes more sense, right? According to what we read. So that's what I would put there. Okay. And then here's some sample answers. And now we're going to read the statements and choose the two true statements. So here they're asking which two statements are true according to the text. A says Toronto is the most dangerous place in Canada. Well, the thing is, it's true. as much as it's true that they talked about some dangerous things that happened in Toronto recently, they never actually made a statement about how Toronto's danger levels or crime rates compare to other parts of Canada. So this may be true or this may not be true. I'm actually not sure whether or not Toronto is or isn't the most dangerous place in Canada, something perhaps I should know. But regardless, the article didn't actually touch on this. They did touch on some dangerous events happening in Toronto, but for all we know, there could be a place with even higher crime rates than Toronto as well. Uh, so this one is not necessarily true. I would say this is not given, right? Because they didn't really talk about this. B, people can be targeted for no reason. Well, yes, that is not only is that true according to most people's belief and understanding of crimes, but that was specifically mentioned in the CBC article that sometimes people are targeted for no reason. And we can't necessarily avoid being a potential target of someone who is looking to target people for no reason. Uh, C says the mother's children were on the same subway as the stabbing. So no, this was not true. It was a different subway. It was at a similar place, but the uh, the subway driver stopped their subway because of you know of a, an incident happening on the other subway. He wanted to he or she wanted to protect the people on their subway, right? So this would be false because they you know the mother was so thankful that her children were not on that same subway this time. Thankfully. You know, but that said, there were some people on that same subway, and that doesn't mean that they couldn't be a different time, which is the scary thing. But in this case, no, it's false. The mother's children were not on the same subway as the stabbing. 
Dee says the mother realized that she would not always be there to protect her children. And that's true. She did recognize that. And that was a big thing that that was a big takeaway from this article. So definitely true. And E is there was a shooting on the subway in Toronto. So, I mean, I don't know, maybe there was, maybe there wasn't, you know, actually, I'm sure probably at some point there was something like that that happened at some point in history. But I would say not given for this one, because that's not what this article was about. This article specifically was about a stabbing uh, in Toronto, not a shooting, right? A shooting is when someone takes a gun and they shoot the people on the subway or in a school or somewhere. Whereas a stabbing, that's, you know, it's implied then that there's someone takes like a knife and, you know, stab someone, right? Both are bad, right? Both are, both are not good. But no, I, I want to distinguish that this story was not about a shooting on the subway specifically. This story was about a stabbing in on the subway. Okay. All right. Uh, so that is it for today. Good work today, everyone. And I will see everyone back for part two. I promise part two will be about a, uh, you know, financial stuff. It will not be about, you know, it'll, it will not be this morbid. So I do apologize kind of for the, the topic here. Uh, but that said, um, articles or, or current events, things like this are unfortunately um, what some of the articles are about on the IELTS. So I did want to be stay relevant and choose something that is similar to what could pop up for you guys. Uh, so good work today. And I will see everyone uh, in the next one. Bye, everyone.